Hello, this is Steve Hartley, G0FUW, and I'm here with Dan, M0TGN, and Lewis, G4YTN. And we're going to do a short demonstration about coaxial cable. And uh, two points we're going to cover. One is about the losses that you're likely to see in cables. And the second one, we'll look at the velocity factor of cables. So, to test, first of all, the losses in the cable, what we've got is a setup with a uh, a transceiver, uh, a through line power meter, which is feeding into a, a dummy load at the back here, and we've got it set to CW, so the press of the key and we'll get power onto the uh, meter with a nice steady carrier. And we're going to do the measurements on 3.5 MHz, 28 MHz, and 145 MHz to give a range from the HF through to the VHF. So, first measurement. Uh, the radio is set to 3.5 megahertz, and we'll do a measurement. Okay, you should have seen that it's somewhere between 3.5 and, and 4 watts. I'll do it again just to be sure. On the bottom scale. So I'll make a note of that. 3.5 megahertz. We'll say 3.5 watts. We're now on to 28 megahertz and test it again. Again, bang on 4 watts this time. And then on 2 meters, 145 megahertz. Again, it's reading 4 watts, so we'll make a note of that. Okay, what we're going to do now is we'll introduce a length of coax which is, we've measured, as 12.5 meters, so um, not a long length, but uh, enough to uh, to show us that there's some losses in the cables. Um, while I'm doing this, Dan, could you get the the other end of the cable? Okay, thanks for that. We'll connect that to and try again. Okay, welcome back. Um, we've now connected in the 12.5 metre length of coax and we're going to repeat the, uh, the test, or I should say, this is the, the short patch lead that we had in before between the transceiver and the power meter. So instead of that, you've now got 12.5 metres of the same um, RG58 coax. So, uh, we're set to 3.5 megahertz again. Last time it was about 3.5 watts. It's still three and a half watts. Make a note of that. And uh, we're now on to 28 megahertz. Last time it was bang on four watts. It's down to about 3.25. So 3.25 from four. So there's definitely some loss going on at 28 megahertz. Now on to 145 megahertz. four watts before and it's down to two watts now so we've lost half the power in 12 and a half meters of coax which is a sobering thought what you should see and what we have seen there is that as the frequency increases the losses get bigger so if we could have done on 70 centimeters we can't because the dummy load and the meter aren't uh, calibrated for that uh, band we'd have seen even more loss um, so increasing frequency gives us more loss. The other factor, of course, is the longer the cable, the more loss you get. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add another length of cable, which is about 19 and a half meters, to give us a total length of 32 meters. So Dan, if you could go and get the other cable, and we'll be back directly. Okay, we've now got a total of 32 metres of coax in the uh, circuit. So uh, we're on 3.5 megahertz again. Key them up. Still the 3.5 watts that we had originally. Make a note of that. So there's been no change at 3.5 megahertz at all. We're now going to go to 28 megahertz, where the last time we measured this we had 3.25 watts. 
And that's now down to about two and a half watts. Just check again. Two and a half watts. So we're still feeding four watts in, but we're only getting two and a half watts at the antenna. And we're now on 145 megahertz, where we started with four watts, then we dropped to two watts. We've now got 32 meters of cable in. And that's just about half a watt. Just about half a watt. So we've gone from four watts down to 500 milliwatts on two meters. So again, it proves the point. The longer the coax, the more loss you get. And the higher in frequency you go, the more loss you get. So if you're going to run 32 meters of coax down your garden for your two meter antenna, uh, don't expect to have the full uh, power at the antenna that you're feeding into it. Um, in decibel terms, we've gone from four watts to two watts, that's three decibels. Two watts to one watt, that's another three, so that's six decibels. And then we've halved it again. So there's nine dB of, get, of loss in 32 meters of coax at that frequency. And if you check the manufacturer's specifications, they'll give you decibel loss per 10 meters normally. Some of them do it in 100 meters, but generally they give you 10 meters at different frequencies. So I hope that's a, a practical illustration of that uh, key point. We're going to change the configuration now, and then we'll look at velocity factor. Okay, back with you now, and what we've done is we've uh, taken the 19.5 meter length of coax and uh, we've calculated that it's a quarter wavelength at 3.846, so about 3.85 megahertz. Uh, we've done that by taking the length of the cable, multiplying it by 4, and um, that gives us uh, the, uh, the length of a full wavelength. Uh, divide 300 by that and that gives us the frequency in megahertz, which is 3.846. So by using the analyzer, bring it out of sleep mode, we should see a dip um, at 3.85 there, thereabouts. Uh, it's currently running at 4.2, so if we start to sweep downwards, you can see that the needle's starting to come down. It's still going down and we're at th about 3 megahertz there. And it's there now, about 3 point, no, sorry, 2.5. If we keep going, it starts to, to go up again, so back there. So about 2.5 megahertz um, is where the dip is. Now the question is, why is that different to the calculated value? And uh, we had it at 3.85. Uh, yeah, um, well, the answer is, it's the velocity factor of the cable. The electrical length of the cable is uh, much longer than its physical length because of the velocity factor. And with this type of coax, in fact most types of um, solid polythene um, insulated coax, the velocity factor is 0.67. So you'd expect the frequency to be 66% um, of the calculated value. And if we, if we do a quick um, calculation on the calculator, that's a syntax error. Um, 3.85 times 0.67 is 2.57 and that's almost exactly what we've got on the meter. So that proves that this cable has got a velocity factor of 66% or 0.67. And again manufacturers will quote you that on the specification sheet and um, different coax manufacturers and different types of coax have got different velocity factors. But for the exam purposes, if you remember 66%, then that's good enough. Okay, well that, that's really the end of this uh, short video on coax losses and velocity factor. Just to recap, the losses in coaxial cable are affected by the length of the cable. The longer the cable, the more loss and by the frequency, so the higher the frequency you use, the greater the loss. And then in terms of velocity factor, we've seen that the uh, electrical length of a cable is much longer than a physical length because of the velocity factor, uh, and that's because radio waves travel slower in solid medium than what they do in free space. 
Hope that's been useful and uh, we'll come back to use coaxial cables again in another video later on. 73s from G0FUW, M0TGN and G4YTN.